are unbeatable We'll train until we meet our goal The stakes are high, no we won't fall Because we are unbeatable We are unbeatable We'll train until we meet our goal The stakes are high, no we won't fall Because we are unbeatable Welcome to the world of Pokemon and thank you guys so much for joining us on today's episode of Unbeatable. It is so nice to be here and to see all of you people. Just as a quick reminder, we are all standing currently at the Vermilion Construction Co. building as you have just spent the afternoon playing at the Pokemon Play Place and we are currently on our way out of there after an afternoon of fun and relaxation uh, following two different gym battles at the Vermilion City Gym. Got it. Or three, because Vermilion also battled. Anyway, what do you guys want to do? <laughs> <laughs> what an intro. Um, <laughs> we want to explore the town more, maybe. Um, and uh, what time did we say our meeting with the professor was? Uh, I believe you... I think like we just five said is the time. You said later. I think you guys like... Yeah. Not in that conversation. It said like. Let's five. say that we knew the time and not uh -huh. imagine that we said it previously. And we go in at another that time. Episode and we go at that <laughs> time. Wait, Matt, run back the tape real quick, Matt. Uh, go ahead and I'm go good. ahead and play the clip. It's fine. We're living <laughs> play with the it. Clip. Play the we're, clip. We're living with our mistakes. Um, by the way, we're going <laughs> to the professor's place, um, along with any other stops that we want to uh, make in town. How do we feel about okay. that gang? To the professor. Yeah. Um, very quickly, I'm gonna roll for some stuff real quick. Um, as you guys like start to like leave the Vermilion Construction Co, it's probably getting closer to like five o'clock now. Um, and because it's still, you know, even though it's late in winter and the days are getting longer, it's still like, it still gets dark pretty early. Um, and one of the things you note that, uh, unlike a lot of the places you've been, the streets actually seem to start clearing out pretty quickly as things get darker. Um, you leave Vermilion Construction Co and you can tell that like, as the sun is starting to like crest the ocean over the harbor, probably 10% of the people who are there um, uh, are still on the streets. It's, it's uh, yeah, it, it seems like it's emptying out pretty quick. Is there, like, what's the vibe of the people that are on the street? Is it like a, we gotta hurry up and go because it's dark? Or is it just like a- Go ahead like and a... Four. <laughs> Four, you're not really able to place sort of the like you're able to tell that there is some sort of like air of unease but you're not really supposed to like you're not able to get any sort of source out of it if that makes sense it's a lot of just sort of like people have disappeared and corinne is noting that at this moment point in time i'm gonna turn to seth and dj i'm just gonna as we're walking i'm just casually gonna be like um feels like there's not that many people out and about right now um don't know why is there any sign for like a curfew or something well, i didn't see curfew. one i don't know uh could i text vermilion to be like is there a curfew in this town that we don't know about <laughs> um sure absolutely you can text vermilion uh but i do in my brain and i think that as as dj sort of like like, before we get the answer as to whether or not there is a curfew, upon the question, why would there be a curfew, my brain sort of flashes to the four terrorist the attacks. Several that terrorist attacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might be that right. That might make listen, sense. Listen, listen, she has good education, good intelligence, but she is a dumbass. But you live in a she bubble. She's not thinking that's about fine. it. She lives that's in a fine. bubble. Fine. One of which she personally witnessed, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, as you like text Vermillion, there's like a three dots and then a pause and then three dots and then there's like a two minute gap and then you get a text from them that goes I just asked Nurse Joy and apparently it's not a formal thing but people don't really stay out after dark anymore hmm. that's why um, I feel like most terrorist attacks have happened in broad daylight <laughs> well, uh, is the <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, is our like stores and stuff still true. open though, right? Yeah, it looks like most businesses still are open and running. There is there is no formal curfew in place. It just seems like at night there are fewer people. Though, um, as you're asking about businesses and stuff, Seth, can you roll me just a general int check? Ooh, uh, 
a D10. <laughs> just kidding, it's a D8. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at least not a D4. Also get a four. <laughs> I love how every time I ask Matt to roll anything that isn't a fortitude or education roll, he just kind of goes. It's well, because I'm looking to see which one it is. These four sided shapes are confusing. There's three of them. Uh, you said you got six? Uh, yeah. With a six, actually, as you're glancing around, um, you would definitely spot that, like, most businesses are open, um, but the people who are still milling about you would note are actually semi-familiar faces as you spot several of like the gym trainers that you saw earlier at the Vermilion City Gym um, walking in like pairs, walking up and down streets and such. A neighborhood watch for a city? Crime patrol? A patrol. Hmm. Uh, and there's no like Jenny presence? There is the occasional Jenny presence. Um, you You have spotted over the day you would see like Jenny on the back of a motorcycle walk or going back and forth in the city. <laughs> walking on the back of a walking, motorcycle. Just walking That's the motorcycle. Sick. Driving would be faster. <laughs> it broke That's down so 20 cool. miles ago. The city can't afford to replace it, you know. Um, no, but there has been a Jenny, a Jenny presence, but it seems like without the, w- with the lack of like proper individual crime, it seems like this is mostly like a citizen run thing. You always ask one of them about more details, but from the general vibe that you're getting, it seems like, yeah, it's closer to some sort of like city watch rather than an organized police presence. Interesting. <clears throat> um, okay, well, did you guys still want to go to the professor's lab or did you want to check anywhere else with it getting darker? I mean, I'm down to go to the professor's lab. I don't really have anywhere else that I needed to go, DJ. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that and wrapping it up for the night. I'm getting a little little oogie boogie feeling being outside when no one else is. With that vibe, um, it's not that far to um, Cerise Laboratory. As you guys had passed by it earlier, um, you sort of find your way down the street and around the corner and you find yourself to this like large sort of gated facility um, that has sort of like a, like a hemispherical uh, roof on top of it. Um, and these like large like pillar structures coming out the front of the building. It's very like beautiful. It looks almost closer to like an observatory, but only in an architectural point. Like that's not what it's functionally meant to do. Um, and um, it is at this point still open to visitors as you guys make your way up to the front door. There's this like large painted yellow door uh, that is present. Who's taking the knocks? Uh, I'll knock. Throw on my cloak. <laughs> My clothes, okay, I mean, t- my lab coat. <laughs> yeah, you can toss on your lab coat. Um, okay, so as you go ahead and knock, Tori, can you roll me a d6, please? Yeah, uh, and you just kind of bump, 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 bump. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of uh, wait for someone else to do the last two. <laughs> six. Six. Um, okay. Uh, you said six? Oh, okay. Uh... <laughs> Oh, I no, why'd like you that. say it like that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't uh, like it. Okay. So, uh, as you uh, sort of, like, knock <laughs> on the door, um, you you hear the door <laughs> open, and uh, you don't immediately see a person standing there. Um, instead, you see at about eye level, there is a very familiar metal Pokemon, not familiar to you, this specific one, but the species is familiar, of a spherical Pokemon um, with two magnets coming off either side and little screws in the front of it, as there is a floating Magnemite there. Uh, but this Magnemite seems to be dressed in some sort of like, uh, like cleaning lady's bonnet that's on top of its head. It has like a little <laughs> like pink bonnet just attached to the top of it. Uh, and That's you hear, cute. Magnemite, like from the oh. other side of the door. Well, howdy there. Magna. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's just, <laughs> Magnemite sort of like looks at you and it's just, it, it doesn't seem like particularly hostile in any way, but it's more like greeting you. I hope yeah. it's not hostile. We just knock on the door. <laughs> <and you're> like, <laughs> <"Jeez."> <laughs> fucking That's some kind of security. <laughs> like electricity starts arcing from the magnets and just fucking gets at you. Uh, oh, God. <sighs> Uh, well, I, is Professor Cerise in? Magnemite, and it sort of like you know hovers in air and starts to like nod. Uh, well, can we come in? Magna, magna, and it sort of like pulls off to the side and like floats in and lets you guys follow in behind it. Incredible. Right, well, let's go 
Um, okay. Um, so <laughs> as you start to like m shuffle into the laboratory, you can tell immediately that this lab sort of has this like lived in feel to it as you walk in, like the floors, once this like very polished wooden floor um, are like worn in ways that are like familiar. Um, the, 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 the sort of like, what's the word? The vibe is very much comfortable. Um, and it has sort of like that smell of like an older building. It's not that it's like unlike uncomfortable or, or unpleasant in any way, but it is, it is a bit of an older building is what it is, what it kind of feels like. Um, and the magnemite starts to float down the way. Um, and, uh, as you like follow, you are led down a series of hallways that eventually leads you to sort of like a larger laboratory room where you can hear the sounds of people shuffling and moving, um, and the sounds of conversation happening. Um, and, uh, you, you hear an older man sort of go, uh, Ren, do you have those reports on the Route 13 migration that we had going on? Uh, and you hear another one, uh, speak up and go, uh, I will get those to you tomorrow morning. Uh, as sort of like a conversation <laughs> that's happening. <laughs> Uh, and as you guys uh, start to like go up, you you hear like Magnemite from the Magnemite, like sort of like going ahead of you. Uh, and she goes, "Oh, do we have visitors? All right, thank you, Francois." Uh, and you hear like people begin to turn towards the uh, turn towards the the, the entrance. Um, and stepping in, you can currently see that there are three individuals in the room who are not Pokemon. Uh, you can see that there is probably a man in like his like mid 40s with sort of like messy blonde hair uh, that is kind of like sloppily uh, pushed to the side a little bit. Who's sitting with like a lab coat and like uh, a yellow shirt with like a little magnemite on it. You figure this is probably magnemite on it. Uh, there is. Uh, no. <laughs> is it like in the style of like the soccer mom shirts where it's like superstar <laughs> has a big picture? <laughs> <laughs> can it be if it's yeah, not? man. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Um, Perfect. And you can see <laughs> that there are currently two others. You actually recognize one of them. One of them is Chloe, that woman who was outside um, earlier today when you guys walked by playing with the bolt on and the Eevee. And then the last one, um, anyone who is uh, vaguely familiar with the local professors of uh, Kanto would recognize as an older man with sort of like purple hair that has kind of gone gray on the sides. Uh, and it's got like a, like a, like a, almost like a burgundy, like a red purple sort of uh, look to it. Like a deep, like wine red. Um, as uh, Professor Cerise, the local uh, uh, researcher of Vermilion City. Can I help you? Uh, you hear Cerise sort of look over. Steph is going to uh, have his lab coat on uh, that he put in between walking through the door to get to there. Uh, we'll say, hello, yes, we have an appointment scheduled, I think, right, Chloe? <laughs> we talked earlier. <laughs> uh, you see Chloe looks up at this point and she goes, oh, yeah, Dad, I forgot to tell you there were people going to come by today. <laughs> and she's just sort of like, oh, nice, the lab nice. Her book. <laughs> oh, well, that's good to know. Thank you. You are... Uh, Seth, Seth, you Wake. said. Okay, yep. Seth, what? Wake from the Cerulean you actually did mention, Chloe. That too, yes. Mm -hmm. And the rest of you. Uh, hi, my name is Corinne Willows. I'm traveling with Seth. Mm. And you? He looks over uh, at DJ. DJ. DJ Werther. Please make your acquaintance and she's going to stick her hand out. <laughs> Please to meet you. He needs to shake everyone's hand. <laughs> 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 um and he kind of like steps over and you can see that this like th this man is sort of like very much um he's a taller man but he's very much like stooped just a little bit in terms of like just like low energy he's got like a very calming vibe to him in general uh and he sort of steps over um and he he looks at three and goes well it's a pleasure to have any trainers at my laboratory is there anything i can help you with today uh, not in particular. We were uh, more or less traveling through town, uh, doing the gym circuit, along with other things, and we thought, what better place to learn about more Pokemon in this area than at the local professor's lab? So uh, we were just looking to see if you had any like information, maybe on like cool things in the area to maybe visit, or Pokemon that are unique to the environment here. 
etc. That is a good instinct to have. Uh, stopping by your local researcher's laboratory is, I think, a prudent move for most young trainers. Now, if you're looking for interesting Pokemon in the area, of course, there are all of the classics of the local routes. There are Hypno, there are Sandslash, there are Arbok. Though something tells me that you young trainers are looking for something perhaps a bit more out of the current wheelhouse. Yes? Sure. I'll look Always. The other side. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you are looking for excitement, Given recent tragedy, the local ecosystem has been stirred up quite a bit, so we can always use more help calming down the local Pokemon. If you are looking for tasks or Pokemon in general to seek out, may I suggest um, Route 11 close to the Diglett Cave. There is quite a bit of upset local Pokemon there. Um, for instance, I know that just today there were some trainers that had to stop by and stop a Pokemon from attacking one of the local workers. Um, oh! Yes, there was also uh, several Pokemon that have been abandoned there recently <laughs> that you I'm KDK? aware of. What? Hmm? Yeah, you say that loud can help you with. noise. You said, ow! Oh! Oh, that no, is, not yeah, you did ow. That. I meant, oh. Oh. Yeah. Ow. Uh, ow. Oh, well, got it. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Carry on. Um, I think I think you're talking about us. Oh, really? Yeah, I just I picked up this little guy and I released Rockruff. Uh, he goes, just like appearing in like uh, on the floor and he sort of looks around <laughs> and he was having a great time a second ago because in his perspective y'all were just at the fucking the play place and now you're just in a in an old ass lab with like three strangers um, and you can see at this point he like, looks kind of confused and Cerise goes yes this would be one of the abandoned Pokemon that I was just talking about very well, admirable here's Kyan. he's not abandoned oh, yeah. no more it's good to see he's already found an owner. Well, if that's the case, then you're more than aware that the Pokemon around Diglett Cave have become quite frustrated with the lack of access to their normal habitat. Um, unfortunately, I, I apologize before I go into this spiel. What is your badge level currently? Three. We've all got three. three. Hmm. Then as trainers with only three badges, there is very little you'll be able to do to assist with Diglett Cave itself as the area is currently cordoned off, but um, there are a series of Pokemon outside of Diglett Cave itself that could always use um, a way to vent their frustration and energy. I'm sure the local population would be more than happy to have challenging trainers to come in and vent some anger onto. You had said, <clears throat> Professor, that there were multiple abandoned Pokemon? Is this a trend that you're seeing of Pokemon getting dumped outside of Diglett Cave? As much as we have attempted to combat this over the years, and you see like Cerise looks at uh, the two other workers there who at this point have like started paying attention to the current conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And you see there's like a bit of frustration that all three of them seem to share. As much as we've attempted to combat it, it does seem that Vermilion City as a port town has become sort of a popular location to trainers who are unwilling to go through the proper channels to remove Pokemon that they no longer wish to care for for their parties. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, given that Route 11 has been upset with everything that has happened, the local Pokemon find themselves coming to blows more and more often with the Pokemon that are not naturally from here. I would not be surprised if your Rockruff himself had had some sort of interaction with some of the local Pokemon. And I'm going to scoop up Cayenne into my arms. That combined with our local population's distrust of really going outside at night anymore has led to an unease in this city that even with the lab and the gym's best efforts, people have a hard time going out at night. Is there a, like a specific reason for that? Or is it just because of everything that uh, that has happened around the city? Um, I don't know if you've kept up, but with the um, uh, sort of incident that happened at Diglett Cave um, over a month ago now, it 
shook the people of this city. And mm. given that Pokemon are more active at night and a bit more aggressive at night, um, that combined with rumors of mysterious trainers wandering the city at night, there are... There is good reason for people to be uneasy. What kind of mysterious train? Just people passing through for the gym circuit? We assume so, but... All right, if getting proper details on it, you may want to speak with someone from the Vermilion Gym, but essentially, ever since the sort of attack on the Diglett Cave that exists, um, there has been this series of incidents where people note trainers dressed in black going to and from around town. Uh, the Jennies have looked into it. The police has been working with um, the gym itself to set up sort of a neighborhood watch. Um, but uh. given that there is a lack of proper crime and <clears throat> there are more than a few villainous organizations on the rise, resources have been spread thin. And the trainers in black have been doing what exactly? Is there anything that had that's been, like, the really problem? Bleed? They've per they have performed no actions that anyone is able to tell. They've just been creating a sense of unease in the city. DJ looks down at her own almost all black outfit <laughs> and kind of like she has an orange jacket on, so she like kind of pulls it Tight shut is. and zips it up. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It was DJ maybe the whole time, guys. Some, maybe I should get some DJ got that neon hunter pants. orange on. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna see me. Gonna DJ has a secret teleporter program where they've been teleporting to the Vermilion City every night to terrorize the fucking people of the city. Oh, I'm the BBEG. Um, Don't say that. <laughs> I mean, if... Does it seem like there's anything that could be done to help get people more comfortable with going out later at night? Because, I mean, like, it's only five or six and people are like locked in for the day and that seems a bit like wasteful of their time and day if they can't really finish any business they need to later in the day <sighs> alas uh, while we've been working with the local gym uh, there has been very little we can redo we do to restore people's faith in the um, in the city as bad things seem to just continue to happen Given everything that happened in Seafoam a few weeks ago, everything that happened in Mount Moon a week or two before that, Pallet Town a few weeks before that. The more things happen, the scarcer the resources are, and then the scareder the people are. Mm -hmm. As as the professor starts listing these off, Corinne kind of like just gets curious and pulls out her um a digital map and just starts making like X's on targets. <laughs> you gonna try and connect the dots been... with red string? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna red string it. We're red all stringing right, this all right, bitch. All right, roll me an int check, please. Oh shit. <laughs> That's a D10. Me and my D4 are gonna fucking kill Can this. I... You just wait. <laughs> oh, five. Lord. Five. Wow. Hey yo! Uh, five, mm, uh, it it, it is it is definitely a map of tragedies. It is definitely this sort of like layout of these four major incidents that have happened within the last like month and a half, like just within the last season, really of the of the like uh, trainer season. But hmm. there is no major connecting line that you can see in terms of location. Like you you can do the thing where you draw like lines between locations and like make an X and there is a moment where it's like, oh, it's right over this section of the ocean uh, in the Gulf of And then a whole Kanto. other fucking line fucks yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's there, okay. there. There is nothing that you can cool. currently draw from that. I save it anyway. In the <laughs> <way>. <laughs> you screenshot and say. Okay, well, um, I mean, in the meantime, do you guys have anything that you need any help with while we're here? Um, as I've said, I think we would be more than happy if trainers could swing by Route 11 and maybe try to seek out some of the Pokemon there that are a bit more aggravated and maybe defeat a few in battle. Um, maybe if you could, if you spot any Pokemon not native to the area, we would be happy to take them from you if you, you of course, are not wanting to take them onto your own team. Um, obviously, you have a relationship with your Cayenne now. I do. He's just a little guy. But 
That has been the struggle, has been to find a way to restore people's faith in safety when there is no singular institution that is failing. Mm. Um, mm. But it would definitely be of help to us to have Route 11 restored at the very least. Um, I know that there are several Pokemon there that um, have been quite aggressive since the collapse of the Dicklet Cave. Um, there are a few Doug Trio, um, a Hypno that has been rather aggressive. I know that there is a few abandoned Pokemon on that route that are a bit stronger than some of the others that have led to problems with the local population. Um, but really, when it comes to it, um, just keeping an eye out. Not that we were eavesdropping, mm -hmm. but could you go, what, what, what's the migration on Route 13 about? <laughs> uh, you see, he kind of gives like a knowing smirk to Ren and Ren does that thing where he kind of like, he kind of looks up and he goes, oh shit. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> he sort of like goes over and he like, he like does that thing where you look at his desk. It's kind of low key, like filthy. <laughs> and he goes, he like oh, slides oh stuff off of his desk into the trash and he goes, um, takes his keyboard, taps it on the desk and he goes, um, uh, okay. Uh, so currently on route 13, I am tracking a migration of grass type Pokemon, which makes sense for the season, given that it's springtime. Um, but it seems like we're going to be having a big wave of those coming through to route 11 at some point in the next four to five days i'm gonna be running those numbers and have proper answers back to you professor by tomorrow morning see that you do <laughs> he goes, sweet um but the professor sort of looks back to to seth who had been asking the question the, the the like initial questions of helping and he goes i do appreciate that you've stopped by and that you've immediately attempted to help that has not gone unnoticed um perhaps if you manage to find any of the particular Pokemon that we've been discussing and see to it that they have had a chance to properly exercise themselves in battle or capture perhaps some of the Pokemon that have been abandoned, I can see about setting up some sort of reward for you. Okay, well, uh, I mean, reward's not really necessary. We were just looking to help. Did the gym, so kind of... Mm -hmm. Oh, you have. Killing Congratulations. Time. Thanks. Well, I haven't yet. Well, then I wish you luck, Bo, if nice. you are friends of tomorrow. Perhaps we shall come down and see. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that'd be mighty fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've stretched my legs and headed down to the gym. It'll be nice. Well, you're welcome to come by. Um, but if there's nothing else, I would be happy to host you here if you require extra lodging. I don't know how full up the Pokemon Center is, though. It was busy a few weeks ago before all of the travel to that um, tournament that happened. It's actually, like, super empty. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Everyone's headed up to Saffron. Really? It just seems to be gathering attention. It seems most trainers prefer to be in the bigger cities, and Vermilion as a city that is admittedly accessible to Seafoam is one that tourism has been rather slow to in the last few weeks. Saffron as a central hub is just easier to reach. Most trainers have chosen to settle there while they train for their third badges, though it seems you've already gathered yours. Makes sense. Kind of glad we're not there, honestly. Mm -hmm. Sounds packed. Kind of overrated. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, it has definitely been packed ever since the collapse of both Mount Moon and the Diglett Cave as trainers are not able to head west as they normally would. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Kenna, Kenna, Kenna was just looking at the map and realized exactly, like... Yeah. The oh. routes that go west Yeah, that's some shit, gone. okay. Yeah, they are, <laughs> gone, the yep, okay. <laughs> get west is a Pidgeot taxi right now. That is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Holy sh... It's not like that's you can concerning. cross the mountains. Yeah, the, the mountains are not a passable route. So Mount Moon, so they Diglett have... Cave, and uh, and the water routes are the only real ways to get there. They effectively almost cut the region in half in terms of accessibility. Yes. That's weird. <laughs> that's strange. That's Let's leave wild. that where it is. That's, the, yeah. that's suspicious. <laughs> that's suspicious. Yeah, suspicious. Um, okay. <laughs> But uh, thank you for all the information, Professor. Um, Absolutely. If there's uh, anything else that comes up, just, you know, 
let us know. Um, but we'll... Um, yes, actually. There was rumor of, um, there's a trainer, um, that has come into town recently. I've just remembered that, um... Graham? The lab was hoping to reach out to if I know that you, that you, um, are staying at the Pokemon Center. Um, I believe they're going by the name, ironically, Vermilion now. Uh, if you run into Vermilion this trainer, would you, would you pass... Are they? Oh, I'll have to change my notes. Um, but, um, if you manage to run into this trainer, would you please let them know that the Cerise Lab is hoping to speak with them? Yeah. About what? Absolutely. Oh, Just to um, give them a little more context, if we do. If, if friend we of the them. family. I was, I was hoping to speak with them. Oh. All right. Uh... Yeah, we we could tell him. If we see DJ, him. How, how good is your poker face? Right now? DJ, <laughs> Jeez, oh, what horrible. the heck? Horrible. Your poker what face was is that right gulp, now. dude? Horrible. <laughs> the, the best part for me, and I want this to, moment to stay in the episode, is for me. Tori froze, so Tori was just going for that whole time. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Jeez. Just panic. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, can you my roll a charm check to see how good my your charm. Yeah, roll bluff, please. My charm isn't bad, What's, but what I feel we, like what are you, I should... What are you well, trying to hide a charm? A charm. Let's, see, let's see your poker face right now. We're passing oh a message God. along. What? <laughs> oh, I rolled a 10 <laughs> on my d10. Um, oh, no, I exploded! Yeah. I explode! <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, uh, so that's a 15 plus my badge is just plus 3, so 18 total. So while that expression that you, Tori, personally gave might be a representation of how DJ is feeling, stone cold right now. Stone cold, motherfucker. You don't <laughs> give anything away. Poker DJ. face 100. <laughs> so Tori's like, to yeah, if we see them, we'll tell them. And DJ's like, yeah, if we happen to run across them, you know, mm -hmm. we'll let them Thank know. Thank you so much. But I do we'll appreciate that. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from, from Seth and DJ's perspective, right? Like, because DJ like doesn't know what's going on for, with Vermilion, and Seth has no idea about the backstory that Corinne learned. Well, it's wild. Think, <laughs> I think DJ has picked up that Vermilion is a secretive person uh -huh. and doesn't share a lot of their life with people, and so like, mm -hmm. if they haven't told us that their family is centered in Vermilion City, then that's like news to us, and we shouldn't note that we're affiliated with them because okay, that okay, might okay. that might like bring connections that Vermillion doesn't want so okay 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 she's fair trying enough, to be enough. subtle See, she's trying to be low-key Seth key. is I've I've <laughs> met this person that their name is Vermillion this person says oh I know Vermillion if you see them tell them I said hi one-to-one -one connections for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm... <laughs> I'm not... There's not... Uh, this lasagna ain't layered. It's pretty shallow. Seth's this is just like, yo, why so serious? What are we doing? Oh, Wait, that's such God. an upsetting visual, because now I'm just imagining, like, a stack of, like, cooked lasagna pasta and then just all of the sauce, and it's not layered, and it's upsetting to me. I don't like it. Um, it's just one long, long noodle. noodle. <laughs> you roll it Um... <laughs> uh, we only. can see ourselves out unless <laughs> Francois is that's his, if that's part of his like duties. Uh, as you as you say Francois, you realize that the Magnemite at this point has floated off, and there are like these like curtains on like one of the open windows to the side. Uh, at this point, you hear Magnemite as they turn, and they've just been using like supersonic to like vibrate dust clean the curtains as as the the Magnemite <laughs> has been going. It's actually really cute. By the way, this character is Francois is fully canon to the anime and the best character in all of Pokemon Journey. I love it. I love it. It's cute. <laughs> well, thank you for coming and visiting. I do appreciate that. Of course. Uh, we'll see you real soon. Um, Francois, which way is it again? Magnemite! And they kind of like point and there's like a little like, tick, 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 like spark of electricity that goes in the direction you're supposed to go. Okay, Cute. free arcing electricity. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go that way. <laughs> <laughs> Corinne, at seeing that, Corinne kind of like flinches and like goes to reach for DJ, hoping that they still have the grounding <laughs> mechanism. Um, <laughs> as you cool. guys head out, actually, um, you hear uh, you hear like a couple footsteps on you. Go, actually, hey, uh, wait up one sec. Uh, and that you hear Chloe's voice uh, from from behind you guys. And she looks up and she goes, 
uh, hey, I appreciate you guys offering to do everything that you're trying to do for the lab. Um, but word of warning, if you are going to go on Route 11 and go and fight some Pokemon, um, there is a Pokemon that you should keep an eye out for. Um, it's been sort of like, I think, probably the biggest danger to traveling trainers. Um, I actually, we don't know what it is. Uh, this Pokemon is probably about somewhere three to four foot, but no, nobody's actually seen it. They just sort of like get their ass beat and then wake up. Um, Damn. So I would be cautious. My dad doesn't normally mention it because he thinks all trainers are, you know, he has faith in trainers, but I would just mention, hey, if, you, if you're if you gonna go, be careful, like take some potions. Did they, that. the people who were attacked by this Pokemon, what could they describe slash like how did they so look we know it's probably some sort of flying type they definitely heard feathers um but other than that i would say based off of their bruises it probably knows some amount of like fighting type moves um but it yeah our current theory is maybe a halucha but we're not sure um but um <laughs> I would just keep an eye out. Just, I, it, it occurred to me as you were leaving, it's like, if you're going, keep, you know, we want you to be careful. You only have three badges, you know? I mean, that's really impressive this early in the season, but it's still sort of like a, no, it's, it's a bar we to can entry. Get wrecked. It's understandable. I appreciate the I'm, lookout. <laughs> for, I, well, I mean, you, you should know that four badges <laughs> is normally like the cutoff for league work. So even yes. though this isn't like official sanctioned league work, this is just a favor you're doing for a lab. It's still like, well, good to be careful. Someone's about to be at four badges in a matter of hours so hey now, oh, don't, really? don't be we'll just super them. i didn't even put it together when Jinx you said you were at three and you hadn't done your vermilion city badge yet that's so exciting <clears throat> yeah thanks i don't They're i'm trying not awesome. to jinx anything okay well and then as as chloe like sort of like turns the goat uh she like knocks on like the wooden paneling of the wall uh like the like the knock on wood and she goes well good luck appreciate that mm -hmm. uh, corinne gets superstitious and also knocks on the wall <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what is happening? <laughs> uh, and, and Coley sort of like retreats back to the lab, um, having given you guys that warning. I doff my jacket as we leave. <laughs> Good use of the word doff, by the way. Very nice. Wait, wait, can you like, can you like, can you like, what Very is it, dramatic. Evan Almighty? It, where you just whoosh. It's <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> like the thing that Seth has like fully perfected like a Sailor Moon like sort of transformation sequence. It's, it's to the uh, level of if you guys w uh, watch or play the Yakuza games where they just grab their jacket and pull it off like that. It's like that. Um, yeah, but it's right. just for his lab coat. That's all he, he needs to. 100%. Off, so. uh, when you don it, it's like Doctor Strange. <laughs> uh, we'll see you as later. you guys uh, leave I'll the gym, can you guys, can one of you please roll me a D100? I'll do it. Okay. Me, <laughs> yeah, I said it. <laughs> Not me. Uh, forty-nine, right in the middle. Forty-nine. Let me check nice, my chart. Nice. Ish. Um, with a forty-nine, um, as you guys start to like walk back to the Pokemon Center, at this point, basically everybody has gone inside. It is like getting close to six o'clock at night. The sun is fully down at this point, um, and basically everybody has gone to bed. But uh, as you guys start walking, uh, you do run across uh, a pair of trainers from the Vermilion City Gym. Well, actually, like, as you go by, um, there is that moment of, like, two of you are dressed in very dark clothing. Uh, so there is, like, a moment of, like, a, like, a couple up. of them. <laughs> I'm zipped are, up. Are. I got my bright orange uh, hunter jacket. Blue shirt on. So, but, like, in sort of a polite way, they do shine a flashlight more towards you guys just to see, like, who you are. Um, and you actually hear, oh, shit. Hey, what do you guys, oh, did nobody tell you guys about the whole thing about going out at night? And that voice you recognize, you didn't ask the name earlier, but this is sort of that, um, that gym trainer who had spoken to you right before you went and battled Surge. The one who had like, kind of like let you guys be in on the know about Surge not being in the best of health, uh, everything like mm. that probably like 26, maybe somewhere in there. Like uh, blonde hair, very fit. Uh, he goes, uh, yeah, sorry guys. Um, I forgot to tell you guys, uh, going out at night, probably not the best idea right now. I mean, 
is it okay if we, as long as we three stay together? Like, do you think that's fine? Is this like a enforced it's not like, curfew? It's not like a dangerous or? thing. I mean, there are Pokemon that come out, but like, I saw your guys' gym battles today. You're going to do fine. It's okay. more just like, especially if you're going to go out wearing black, like, I appreciate the jacket. Thanks. I tried. Uh, <laughs> but like, yeah, there's basically just been some like, kind of creepy people walking around at night lately. And I don't want, you know, I, I would hate it if you guys got swept up in that. What are they wearing? Uh, the, the gym trainers, they are yep. wearing like a, like, it looks like they're wearing like their normal clothing that they would wear, but over top of it, they have like bright yellow, like vermilion gym, like jerseys on over top of mm. it, just so that they're recognizable. Like gotcha. a penny. Yeah. Uh, where do you normally see them like frequent most in town? I mean, I would say probably the urban centers is where they've been seen the most, sort of like this area and kind of points in the general clump direction of like the like lab Pokemart uh, construction co sort of like direction. And they do stuff or they don't do stuff? Not as far as we're aware, but they creep people the fuck out and that like makes people feel not safe. And when people don't feel safe, their Pokemon don't feel safe. And when Pokemon don't feel safe, <sighs> Lots of shit happens. Well, has anyone approached them and asked them what they're doing? Yeah. And they always seem to just sort of disappear. What do oh, you mean? That's spooky. Yeah, like I in mean. Th- like out of thin air? Got, I mean, I mean, if I had to put my finger on it, I'd probably say teleporting Pokemon. But we do have a betting pool at the gym and somebody does have money on ghosts. Not ghost Pokemon, just that they are ghosts. That they are ghosts. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we can help you guys look if you need more people. Oh, dude, I appreciate that. Flashlight. Um, <laughs> yo, wait, that Sidger's cranks up? Uh, yes, much uh, cheaper. So you don't have to waste. Honestly, that might be the move. Uh, and and he looks over where you see he's got like a little like utility belt of like like he's got like a little first aid kit and a and a, and a flashlight and one of the pouches he opens is just like eight double A batteries on the inside. That's batteries. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, we're always down for volunteers. You know, most of us aren't even from Vermilion City. Like, we just like uh, <laughs> we just come from like you know. We, we wanted to train here, so this sort of like makes it our town that we chose, if that makes sense. So if you guys want to like do some volunteer work, I I could totally add you to the roster. You're coming back for your gym battle tomorrow, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, well, if we see anybody, um, we can just shoot you a text or something. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Uh, and he passes over his poke gear. What's your name, by the way? Oh, I'm Thad. Thad, like Thaddeus? T-H-A-D. Yeah, this is Matt asking. T-H-A-D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad. But yeah, um, no, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be super down to throw you. <laughs> Knowing how they train at the Vermilion I Gym, he probably God. got a dumpy. <laughs> Not gonna lie, squats Jesus and leg Christ, kind Tori. of important at the fucking, at the Vermilion Gym. <laughs> Fat ass. Hey, yo. <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, yo. Um... But, uh, yeah, he, he like, exchanges Pokegear information with you guys, um, gets everybody's number, and he's like, yeah, 100%. And it, if you did want to come volunteer, we can always use more people on the roster. Wouldn't even have to be a regular thing. Cool. All right. That yeah. sounds nice. Um, where, are y'all, where are y'all headed? To our Pokemon Center? Okay. To the Pokemon uh, Center. Do you guys want us to, like, walk you over, or you guys had good to just head over on your own? Uh, I think we're... We should be good. I think we'll be good. Right. Okay. We just want to make sure that everybody's feeling safe because, yeah, the, the vibe in the town has not been correct for the last, like, month and a half. I get that. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, shit. You guys were in the tournament. You guys were fucking in Seafoam, like, two weeks ago. Uh, yep. Yeah. We saw a lot shit. of stuff. Is that hard to bring up? I didn't mean to, like... No. Okay. It's just like, there is sort of a shared experience with, uh, not every trainer has been around during one of those incidents, but more and more, you know? It's one of those things, four cities in like a month and a half, a fair amount of people have been through shit this season. 
Corinne kind of like scoffs and is like, yeah, we can't seem to get away from it. It's definitely a hard time. And that's, I really wish there was just like something we could do to just like make people feel safe, you know? Uh, more street lights? It's kind of dark. Uh, that's, not, that's not a bad idea, actually. This side of town does like not in have a, enough in a town lights. That has a lot of uh, electric type Pokemon that is like, mm -hmm. not a lot of that here. Even like solar yeah. powered lights could. Uh, that's a good idea. We should bring far. that up in the next city council meeting. Um, how but, how yeah. often do you have those? City council meeting every two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Maybe sooner. Um, no, but like, honestly, it's like that's gonna end up being like a like a whole thing anyway. Because anything the city does, like, then they gotta go get it signed off by the construction co. Like, I remember when we tried to get like ramps installed at the Vermilion Gym. Of course, like that was like a you know an accessibility thing, so that was like it got passed pretty quick. But we still had to run all the permits through construction co, and that was like a whole thing. Now, why is that? Oh, because they they built the goddamn town. You know, they built everything. But who, no, that don't seem right. who who Does owns the town? Like the construction. Well, I mean, it's still it's still a town. town. It's still you know it's still owned by the Kanto government and everything. But like old man you know, Vermillion <laughs> owns the town, <laughs> runs the big oil mill too. Uh, no, but it is, it is the thing of they they did like you know they did build the town. So oftentimes we'll have to like make sure that we're running everything by them just to like. Make sure everything sticks within the within the plans, because currently they're working on like eight projects in this town. I mean, they got all the projects going on at Seafoam. They just rebuilt frickin' Pallet Town, so like they've got a bunch of stuff going on all the time. Well, who at the construction co approves it? I wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, that's fair. not. Yeah, I was like, uh, but uh, I do know that we did have to like send it through to them. But like, I'm a gym trainer, you know. I don't I don't send the stuff. I'm just thinking about <sighs> it. Sounds the operation should be mm -hmm. like. It sounds lucrative. Does it the does. city see any of the money that the construction co gets for doing all these projects? Oh yeah, that's, like I mean, taxes? that's one of the reasons they can afford to do all the cool projects around here. Like, um, they built that Pal Park not too long ago. Um, they do a lot of Which stuff with the great. fan club. Um, they do like, like big, like festival days and stuff. So like the, it's definitely while it's a pain in the ass, construction co is worth it. Like they're good people, you know? Um, they, 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 they have sort of like everybody's good, best interest at heart. Corinne just hears Gavin out of the ether just being like, big corporations, you had Bosco and now you've got, and I just hear Gavin in Corinne's head and Corinne has to like shake her head to be like, get out. See, this is, this is play. Uh, so uh, audience, this is the natural player suspicion. If any GM ever says that there is a good institution, immediately, immediately no, the players not. go, I don't No, trust there's that. not. I can't I don't be right. trust that. How many sponsorships can a trainer get? <laughs> I'm going to be the inside man of As long as place. they don't have an exclusivity clause You can get as many sponsorships as you want uh, the, Bro, the next The next uh, trading center we'll Trio post it. is going to be the three of them Sponsored. In like one of the backhoes Like sitting in <laughs> <laughs> If you remember, uh, the, the champion from Galar has, like, 40 sponsorships on his fucking, like... That's how my uh, lab coat's about to be. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I got Honestly, Oak Lab. No. I have one for Vosco patched on there. It's gonna be it's gonna be looking pretty good sooner or later. But they're all written um, in Sharpie. All right, well, we're gonna keep the trolling. <laughs> I know how to Just, uh, <laughs> Make sure you guys are staying safe. If you do see anybody spooky, send a text. Um, I doubt we'll be able to get there in time to see him, but we believe you. Honestly, there's been a lot of, like, you know, just random showing and happenings. This is a professor question. Yeah, go for it. To, to Corinne's knowledge, is there a way to um, track teleportations? Uh, really? Unless you have a powerful psychic? Probably not. But if you have a psychic type, it's possible that they could. Track yeah, there, it? there are sp there are specific Pokemon that really um, specialize in sensing other psychic types. Specifically, any Pokemon. Here, actually, roll me a Pokemon knowledge check. Pokelore. Yeah, Pokelore. Oh, I got two. I got two points in that. Okay, hang on. I'm excited. <laughs> Do you want help on and that? I rolled another one. No, <laughs> so four, crazy. five, six. <laughs> Is this how I you told get you your today was not going to be a good day, you guys. Give your shit luck to Kenna. Is that what happens? <laughs> today is the like day. It. it had to how happen. About, how about, 
McKenna, you stick to battling really good because I can't do that apparently. <laughs> All right, so no I'll do the not battle. You find out everything. <laughs> uh, uh, let, let, stick to computers. You're good with that. <laughs> Corinne, you have the knowledge that a powerful psychic type Pokemon would probably be able to, to track other psychic types. And mm -hmm. specifically, there are probably Pokemon that are more specialized at, at it than others, but you cannot think of what those Pokemon currently are. Corinne's like, hey, Seth. I wonder what special <laughs> psychic type would be good at finding out other psychic type. We should find a psychic type Pokemon to know if a psychic type would know what a psychic type can do. Uh, psychic Corinne type. says yeah, exactly that to Seth. Oh. Uh, <laughs> You know, there are Pokemon that are like, it's not just the typing, like a specific Pokemon are better at that than others. Not just like overall for the, I'm going to, I'll roll for it. I'll roll. Yeah, go for it. I was going to say, which one? Pokemon knowledge check. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's going to be um, uh, 14. 14. 14 is really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? Honestly, you would probably also have back knowledge of this just because of who your parents are. They probably would have mentioned this at some point as well. Flashcards. Yeah. Pokemon who psychic type Pokemon who have like knowledge based abilities like trace or forewarn, generally speaking, are better at sensing other psychic types. Uh, so if you ever wanted to find a psychic type Pokemon, try and find one with trace or forewarn. That's all I'm saying. Guys, I Professor, feel like we Pokemon need to go those? to Route 11. <laughs> uh, so, like, off the top of your head, with a 14, I'll give you two named Pokemon. Give me 30. Um, Gardevoir and Hypno, both are Pokemon okay. that are pretty good at sensing other psychics. There's a lot of Hypno on Route There's at least 11. one. There's oh, weird. There's one. a side quest where you might need to battle Hypno, and then Hypno <laughs> might be relevant for another <laughs> That's side quest. enough. That's, so that's enough. Crazy. All right, guys. That's been it for this episode of Unbeatable. You I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Matt, don't call my bluff. I'd... I proved it last time. I'll putting do it. it together. We're putting it together. <laughs> no, don't. Under an hour editing We're time, I'll eat that up. <laughs> I'll eat that up. Jesus. Jesus. Uh, but having departed from Thad and the other gym trainer that was there that I forgot that there was a second one there, so I didn't roll for which one it was. Um, you guys go to the uh, Pokemon it's, Center. Uh, Thad and uh, Patty. And Patty. Fair enough. Patty and uh, Patty. You, you guys are easily able to make it back to the Pokemon Center, um, at which point uh, Vermilion will greet you as they have simply been on their phone the entire time you have been gone. Um... Welcome back, uh, is what you would be saying to us if it was the other way around. Anyway, uh, so we went to the um, uh, <laughs> professor's lab, and um, they said that um, they're friends of the family or something. They said they knew you as Vermilion. I don't know. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did they pass along, like, a message or anything? I think they just said, like, hi. That really that was the gist of it, right? They, guys? Yeah, they yeah. asked for, for you to stop by. Okay. They also wanted well, I mean, a blood sample. They wanted to know how tall you've gotten, if you if the boots make you taller, or if that's just like projection. I'm kidding. I'm making all this up. <coughs> well, Professor Cerise is a is a good guy, so you know. Yeah, it makes sense he'd check in. Um No yeah, I'll probably swing by at some point this week. Cool. Also, creepy guys in town. Uh just like lurking yeah uh, after you texted me i was asking um nurse joy about that apparently they're just like lurking yeah. mm -hmm. that but makes me so uncomfortable a, for so many reasons if you find a a psychic pokemon like a gardevoir hypno oh well drowsy is native going. to route 11 so like that we wanted to yeah, we could well, I mean, get Drowsy to turn into a Hypno, but like... Right now. Let's go, guys. But... <laughs> oh, Corinne's backpack is on. Oh. <laughs> That's a lot. I had a gym no, we don't have today. To. We got oh, time. okay. Corinne puts the backpack we did. down. <laughs> 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 Vermillion slowly like, pulls a fire extinguisher off the wall to hand to... to, to <laughs> Corinne takes it. <laughs> yeah, like... Uh, <laughs> The paper wait, the tries to oh, shove yeah. it in the backpack. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, uh, I don't think you could just take that, Corinne. You have to pay for it. Why it's not? fine. I'm a sponsor, I trainer. Just... We got money for days. <laughs> uh, I think Corinne has garnered a reputation of beating the shit out of criminals with fire extinguishers. With you, 
Nobody else what? knows about I, that. <laughs> I wasn't actually like conscious for this, so I actually have no recollection of I this was, happening. It was sick. That thing spiraled. <laughs> did you like? Did you shoot him with it, or did you just no. hit him with you it? You ever? Okay. How far do you think you could throw that? Me? Far. This, this fire extinguisher. <laughs> how far do you think you could throw it? I don't think I could triple it and aim for the head. That's what Corinne did. It was cool. <laughs> They were like, what are you doing here? And we were like, well, I, I say we. I heard that guy probably like drowned world. afterwards. Uh, Round. We're there. We're fine. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, ooh, it's a long day. We got a chip battle tomorrow. We got to go. He's probably chip. fine. Yeah, you may be. Pat's like, Pat's <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, we're going <laughs> to. I was hypothermic the whole time, so I don't remember any of this. I'm all tuckered out, so I think I'm going to go to bed. Uh, Corinne, since we're sharing a room, if you need someone to talk to or to vent or to uh, understand why you did that, you just let me know. I'll be here for you. Self-defense. Self-defense is <laughs> okay. why. Okay. Okay, so okay. scratch the last question then. Uh, <laughs> please don't hit me with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> Corinne takes the fire extinguisher and puts it, walks it to the other side of the room and puts it down and comes all the way back. Why didn't you just put it back on the hook that we took it off of? That it was, you were standing right next to it. Yeah, you literally, that you was are. the most effort. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, gym battle tomorrow for DJ. And then gym hey, yo. battle. <laughs> we'll go find some creepy guys and... Uh, see why they're being Wait, creepy. so wait, we are planning creepy on tracking guys. down the creepy we guys. That we is are? Like, that is actually a conversation we? that we're having. Uh, yes. I don't, do you guys have anything yes. else you want to do? Yes. No. I just want to clean up Route 11 right quick, but yeah. I'm down to catch some creepy guys. Sure. Yes! Uh, yes! I feel like that was more of like the, if if Professor Cerise wasn't telling us something, I think he was like, go check out Route 11. There's creepy guys in town. You guys should really take care of them. Uh, <laughs> go check so out Route 11. That's what I got. What conversation did you have with the professor? Like, it's just for a million who was not present for any of these conversations. Like, what the fuck? Are you vigilantes now? Like, just like a whole conversation. Just doing what feels right. I think I heard an eagle's <laughs> cry just... somewhere in the distance after you said that. <laughs> we just TLDR the whole conversation. Gavin's back, guys. Gavin's back. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Has anyone checked in on Gavin in the last two weeks? Uh, I think he's been sending us text messages, updating us on stuff. A lot of pictures oh. of his shoes. Kind of weird. Well, I didn't get those text messages. It's in our group chat. Oh, I think I might have notifications for that disabled. Let me check. Oh, I We're totally did. Vermillion. Vermillion. <laughs> I we was make one new group you chat. You guys were texting a lot. Corinne, you send too it's many photos like of Pokemon. I've seen I, Myrtle before. I you tell that don't to feel bad face. about that at all. No, don't yeah. pull Myrtle out. Don't pull Myrtle out. Don't pull Myrtle out. <laughs> <laughs> no. Corinne like okay. holds the ball threateningly. You are legally obligated though to follow our new Pokegram account. You have a new Pokegram account? True. Sure DJ, do. hit him with it. It's Training Standard Trio at Training Standard Trio on Pokegram. I'm sorry, wait. Training? Okay, wait. Center. Okay. Trio. Okay, sorry. When you said it all at once with your act, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, just, just, oh uh, sorry. Uh, Let me try again. Training Center Trio. No, no. I, <laughs> no. It wasn't like, meant to be. Wrenches, just like. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even meant to be sassy. It was just meant to try and fix it. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Okay, oh, I see that was really cute. I okay. see that wasn't better. I will follow this on the condition that Corinne, you're allowed to send a maximum of one Pokemon photo a day to me. Okay. okay. There's no limit for you. You're in the clear. Oh. Click. Fourteen hundred fifty-one uh, <laughs> followers. Um, with that, <laughs> you will f successfully get to your first night in Vermilion City. Uh, and we're gonna do a villain roll because it's been a while since we've done uh, one of these on camera. Yay! By the way, just real quick, we did some of these off camera for the for the previous arcs. Um, it went great. And it went um, horribly. Went so great. Um, Don't so lie. <laughs> give it to me. We did talk about them. Uh, let's see here. I'm, who wants to go first? Again. I'll do it. You're going Thank first. <laughs> D20. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, D there's no D20s left. D4. 
So I'm going to stop. Yeah, give me a D4. Six. Give me a D4. Okay. All right. That was the first oh, Let's see shit. if one of the villain organizations what completes their goals. What do we want to get? What do we want to have? Let's roll, guys. Call it <laughs> I don't know. We you should roll it in the air. Four? <laughs> That's a three. Oh, that would, that would have been so good. Though. Plus okay. my badges. Six. Let's no, go. No, no badges. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> DJ, give me a D12. Eight. Eight. Okay. Corinne, give me a D6. Two. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Kevin, roll me a D6. I'm going to save that one for him. Uh, let's see no, here. No, uh, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, he said he wants to roll for his dad, so I will call him later and let him roll for his dad. But every time. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Matt, give me a D4. Tori, roll a D4. Uh, oh, I'm rolling a D4. You told me to roll a D4. Yeah, I, have, I had you both roll a D4. Oh, what was the okay. result to yours? Two. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Can I only no. do six? I don't want that one. <laughs> I think it was the oh league. My. What? It's a six. Okay. That uh, could have been our clarify, mind. That could have been our uh, mind. Can I, that is the only unnamed faction that is not a villainous organization. So good for you. Oh, oh. okay. However, I now have to go pull up a document that I've had written for quite some time. Okay. So as you all find yourselves resting in the Vermilion City Pokemon Center, uh, me, 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 all just sleeping in your either independent or shared rooms based off of who you are. No terrorists. Brandon and I are snuggling. <laughs> yes. I'm the big spoon. Fair enough. <laughs> Far away from Vermilion City in an underground bunker, unobserved by any of you, because of course you're all asleep. There's no way for you to know that this is happening. But there is a conversation currently happening where you hear this sort of like raspy voice turn to someone else and go, is that it? Have you got it working? I, maybe the, the inscription's right, but I don't know. This thing hasn't been activated in a long time. Give it one more attempt for the night. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, we'll come back tomorrow with a new one. Okay. This could be it. This could be what we've been working for. I know. That's why you need to hit the button. Okay, I just wanted to put some time into it. All right, are, are you ready? Yes. All right, the, three, two, and you hear the click of a button. And in that moment, there is a deep um, vibrating noise that begins to happen. And there is sort of like this reverberation that tremors through the ground very lightly, not like the legendary that appeared in Seafoam, but instead it's closer to the sound, feeling of like a machine's vibrating. Um, and six dots begin to glow on the surface of the piece of machinery that they're seeming to attempt to get to work properly. And as those six dots all appear, um, there is a moment where one looks to the other. Is that it? Is it working? Sir, it's working. And that's where we're going to end today's session. No, what you, is it? What is it? Who are they? Completed their goal. You, but, mm. Mm. but you, but you said. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Unbeatable. We'll see you guys Sorry, next guys. time. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh my God. The Blue Rockets have a Reggie Steel. Dude, I can't. <laughs> it's I'm Reggie of some kind. Six dots, too specific. Lord. Reggie it is definitely a Reggie. Reggie still seven a dots? Rock? Reggie still is seven no dots. No shot. It is. Jesus. In fact, all the Reggies are seven dots. Oh. What the heck? Except for one. Yeah, Reggie Gigas. That's it. Oh, shit. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Stop it. Hmm. This is all insane. Right. I'm gonna. I didn't say anything. I also left it recording so that I could get all of this conversation. <laughs> oh my god.
Thank you for watching this episode of Unbeatable. Don't forget to get access to our Discord through our Patreon, because we hang out with our community there and gather questions for our monthly Q&As. See you later, and don't forget to stay unbeatable. Till I meet my goal If stakes are high, no, I won't fall Because I am unbeatable Earning every badge, whatever it takes I'm gonna be the best trainer, you just wait And I know the road ahead looks like it won't be easy I am unbeatable Standing by my side, got my friends with me To explore a whole world of possibilities But no matter what the challenge is We can overcome it together Because we are unbeatable Till we meet our goal The stakes are high, no we won't fall Because we are unbeatable We are unbeatable We'll train until we meet our goal The stakes are high, no we won't fall Because we are unbeatable